So this is just a short video presentation in preparation for Monday morning when we're going to have Comanche modeling in the studio, some poses, uh, a variety of uh, quicker poses which will be material for you to build up compositions of figures in interior. So she'll do short poses and she'll change her costume a little bit so that she can appear to be different people. Now, in preparation for that, I just want to make some suggestions. I've made some copies of the drawings that I did last week in the museum, and I'm going to draw on top of those. Uh, the ones on white paper with the line, and then I made some copies of my uh, charcoal and chalk drawings as well. So um, when Comanche is striking poses in the studio, I'm going to put that on Zoom. So those of you who don't make it to the studio will be able to take part on Zoom and I will record the Zoom meeting as well. So if you can't make it on Monday morning, it'll be available um, for you to use to, to look at another time. So for example, here where I've made a, a copy of my charcoal and chalk, chalk drawing, I've also managed to make a note about one of the figures that was in the museum. So I could do a couple of things here. I've got a figure reference book that I'm going to use for this demonstration, but knowing that kind of rough suggestion of the scale of a figure, uh, if Comanche were to strike a pose, the sort of pose that I'm seeing in my um, figure reference book, which is actually a businessman with a walking stick, I can just draw on top of my photocopy this new pose, taking the notes that I made in um, in charcoal as my reference. So that will be one possibility. I, I find, and you will probably find as well, um, this is just photocopy paper that I've printed on, so it's not ideal for drawing. It's got no surface, which is why it's not ideal, but it can... Um, I think the best thing to do is a bit like tracing paper. If you spray it with some fixative, if it's not getting got enough of a tooth for you to do what you want to do, well, then I would spray it with fixative and then you'll be able to get a little, little bit more material on. But you see there, I've been able to go from my original drawing to adding this new figure. I'm just putting in uh, black lines, but I could also um, spray that, put some colour on or even use some white, white lines. So that's one possibility. Another possibility with that drawing, if I find my other, my other reference, I've got uh, a lady with a shoulder bag and a carrier bag. Maybe I'll put her over here, rushing through the museum. And what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to make her much bigger. And I'm going to... Put her head, I'm going to start, although she's going to be bigger and sh her feet are going to be much lower, I'm going to start her head roughly on the same level as my businessman with a walking stick. So this could easily be Comanche. Posing, of course, with her. It says shoulder bag and carrier bag. So it's a shopping trip. And I'm putting her there on top of the notes that I've made about the museum or that I've been um, printed off. It's a bag behind. But I'm trying to illustrate two things here. Firstly, that I can introduce that figure into this space and I can get that figure to share the space with my businessmen. But also because I'm putting it across my prepared interior, she's going to occup occupy the same space. But if I start, if I make her bigger and start her head at the same level as um, the businessman figure, then I'm going to get a sense of scale and proportion within that interior. Got some other material, I've got a little bit of compressed charcoal or Conte, which might make more of an impact on the 
on this smooth photocopy paper. And I've also got some, some white chalk. So maybe the notes I'd made about the interior of the museum can be a bit developed, you know, can be developed as a negative shape. And I might even get something onto her. So I think that uh, illustrates reasonably well one of the things I've got in mind for you, that you can copy your drawings and then have them as starting points. So they're, they're interiors that you can then superimpose some figures onto. So I think that works well on that grey surface and I could develop the colour further. I could spray it and uh, put more layers on. But the starting point would be, of course, Comanche's poses and seeing how they work um, in relation to the setting. The other thing that I might experiment with, suggest that you try too, is some of these line drawings that um, we did at the beginning in Biro. So again, this is a photocopy. So I've got my walking businessman. This, I'm not sure about this book, this figure reference book that was such a success for Jack Vetriano because they've got the oddest characters but I have got this chap with his walking stick making his way through the museum and I suppose because I've started with Biro I really ought to carry on but again, if I want to do something more with figures in this space, I think there's no harm in starting with the head and drawing larger. But having the heads at the same level, but the feet inevitably much lower because I'm drawing taller person and although when you take this approach you don't quite know how things are going to turn out especially not if you use the biro so you've got a nice kind of decisive uh, effect that I think is one of the best ways of generating some interesting compositions so I've got some basic principles that I'm going to start with. I'm going to do a line drawing and I'm going to keep the heads at the same level. But other than that, it's got to be a little bit of a process of discovery. And I think just to make things a little bit clearer, I'm going to lightly hatch that figure in. I've made him a little bit short, so it might be better if he was slightly longer. Anyway, so that might be something as well if you've got some Biro drawings, you might introduce some of Comanche's poses into those spaces, again working with heads at the same level. And of course if I fill him in a bit, then I might decide where's the light coming from the left, so perhaps I can just guess some shadows. And that will always make him, make the figures land a little bit more, and I could even see if there's a few other spaces that I should introduce tone, some simple hatching to. So the last thing you might consider trying, which some people were doing at the museum last week, is beginning with the figures. So don't, don't work with an interior. Have Kamachi strike her pose. Here she goes again as a businessman with a walking stick. And try and create scale, well, try and use scale to create um, space. So we'll have a big, a big uh, chap there. So that might be one pose. And then when you get a second pose from your model, you could, again, keep the heads at the same level. But produce a smaller figure so that it's in the distance. And if you really want this to work, go for 
an extreme of difference. So if both figures are fairly close in size, this idea is less likely to work than if you have an obvious difference. So I'll remind you about this again on Monday when we have a real model and when we have a, a variety of poses. But these are things you might be ready to experiment with. Having two poses and putting them on the same page but working with different scale. And again, there may well be lighting. Well, there will be lighting. There may well be shadows and things that you can start to work with. And then perhaps you'll feel bold enough to either work with your museum interior or she might, you might have some other sort of reference for an interior so that you can go from figures of different scale and begin to experiment with inventing or applying them to a setting. Okay, well, see you on, um, see you on Monday morning or uh, at the Zoom on Monday evening. Bye-bye.